All right, we're going to continue this uh, sprayer calibration series here. Uh, so today I'm going to be calibrating this uh, Steel Green SG46. Uh, this is what I actually use to spray my yard with. So what you're going to need is a measuring wheel, a measuring pitcher, and a tape measure. And this is actually what a boom sprayer looks like. It's got a boom on it. So it's got four nozzles. So if you've got a backpack sprayer that's got more than, you know, you got a boom and it's got nozzles on it, then this will apply to that also. So stick around here and I'll show you how to get this thing calibrated. So with a boom, like I said, you've got nozzles. So these nozzles have a recommendation on the spacing. Uh, these are T-Jet and these nozzles are spaced 20 inches apart. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but from center to center, we are 20 inches apart. So after we figure out the tip spacing, which was 20 inches, uh, we're trying to figure out what the effective spray width is on this. So I've got four nozzles on this machine and they're 20 inches apart. So however many nozzles your machine's got, You'll count those nozzles and you'll take the tip spacing, which again, these are 20 inches apart. So we'll do 20 times four equals 80 inches. And you're gonna take whatever that measurement is, mine's 80 inches, divide that by 12. So my effective spray width on this machine is 6.66 feet. And the reason why you're trying to find the effective spray width is because these nozzles taper off on the edges. So that means there's less spray on the edges versus what's coming out the middle. So this nozzle is going to, the spray is going to be less coming here. And this nozzle, the spray is going to be less coming here. But once they overlap, you're gonna get the same spray as what it's putting out in the middle. So that's why you find the effective spray width of a boom. So the next step is to take this, this is the effective spray width, 6.66 feet. We're trying to find what's gonna make a thousand square feet. So 1,000 divided by six, 0.66 equals 150 feet. So I need to measure off 150 feet with this measuring wheel. And once I get that measured off, I'm going to time myself how long it takes to drive 150 feet with this machine. And you'll do the exact same thing with a backpack sprayer. You'll just use your metronome app so you can keep on pace. So I've got my measuring wheel. Um, I'm going to use the edge of the concrete here as my starting point. And we're going to walk off 150 feet with this. And I'm going to time myself in the next step, traveling that 150 feet to see how long it takes me. And you need to go over this step two times when you're timing yourself. Uh, take the two numbers that you get and add them together and divide them by two to get your average. So here we go.
All right, we're at 150 right here. So I'm going to put a mark there, and that's what I'm going to end at. All right, so after uh, you get that measured off, which mine was 150 feet, I'm going to take my phone, and I'm going to get my stopwatch out, and that's what I'm going to use to time myself doing this. Obviously, again, I only have two hands, so I can't hold this camera and hold my phone and drive the machine, so... I will time it and I'll show you the time of what it takes me at the end. And when you're doing this, only use water. Don't don't use chemicals to do this. Uh, we're just using water for calibration. Uh, the water is the carrier of the chemicals. So, you know, you mix the chemicals into the water. For, for doing this, the water's plenty. So, I'll get this timed out and I'll see you in the next step. Here we go. All right. So my time of doing that is 20.63 seconds. So I'm gonna call it 21 seconds. And the next step is gonna be to take that measuring picture and I'm gonna catch uh, those nozzles for 21 seconds. Now the correct way to do this is to catch each nozzle individually. And then you would take and add up what you get, the ounces you get out of each nozzle. All right, so hopefully you can hear me. I've got my machine running and I'm gonna catch these nozzles for 21 seconds. Here we go. All right, so I caught that nozzle for 21 seconds. Uh, as I mentioned, I just caught one nozzle for video reasons. So I caught 64 ounces in 21 seconds. So now the math to figure this out. I am gonna take 64 ounces and multiply that times four because I've got four nozzles so however many nozzles you got that's how what you need to multiply it by so 64 times four equals 256 ounces is what I got so there's 128 ounces in a gallon so we're gonna do 256 divided by 128 equals two gallons so my machine is spraying at two gallons per thousand and that's what I've got it set up as is two gallons per thousand so remember you take what you catch in the pitcher which in my case was 64 ounces I have four nozzles so 64 times four equals 256 ounces there's 128 ounces 128 ounces in a gallon of water so i'm going to do 256 divided by 128 256 divided by 128 equals two gallons so that's two gallons per thousand square feet so uh you know that was an example of two gallons per thousand well a lot of you may not want two gallons per thousand so let's say you was wanting one gallon per thousand well at one gallon per thousand first of all let me say this you need to keep your machine 
the pressure and operating spec of the nozzle. Me, I run uh, 34 PSI. So I don't like to get above 40. I like to stay, stay between 30 and 40. So if you was wanting less, less uh, gallons per thousand, you know, you could lower pressure or you could change the tips. Uh, there's m several different tips, you know, that you can get in the same style tip to help you, you know, achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. Uh, so, you know, you can also, like I said, you can also change the pressure to uh, fine tune that a little bit. Um, you could change your speed also. Uh, I don't typically like to mess with my speed. I either do it by the pressure or by changing the tips, but I'm always trying to keep my pressure between 30 and 40 psi if you get up in high pressure you get a lot of drift low pressure the droplets become really really big and, you, and the coverage is not as good so that's why there's you know a recommended pressure for these nozzles so that's pretty much all i got on this video uh, just remember you're wanting to uh i'll recap this real quick First thing you need to do is find your tip spacing and you take your tip spacing and multiply that by the number of tips you got. So in this case again it was 20 inch tip spacing and it's four nozzles so 20 times 4 equals 80 and then you take that number which was 80 and there's 12 inches in a foot. 80 divided by 12, it come out to 6.66 feet. Well, you we're spraying per thousand square feet, so we take a, a thousand and divide it by 6.66 feet, and that come out to 150 foot, and that's what we marked off. And then you're going to take uh, a measuring wheel and mark off 150 feet, or whatever you come up with. You take your spray width your effective spray width and do all this. This is just for my machine. But you take, uh, mark off 150 foot, and then you time yourself how long it takes you to go that, whatever your number is. Mine was 150 and it took me uh, 21 seconds. So, and then you will catch your nozzles for 21 seconds. Uh, you need to do each nozzle and you'll take that number and you'll uh, multiply that by the number of nozzles you got. In my case, I caught 64 ounces and I multiplied that by four because I've got four nozzles and it come out to 256 ounces. And then you take that number and you divide it by 128, 128, which is 128 ounces in a gallon and that'll give you your gallons per thousand square feet so i appreciate you watching i hope this isn't confusing uh it's really not it's very very easy to do uh, this is just you know it's the way i do it there's multiple ways to do this as long as you're putting out what you're supposed to i don't care how you do it i just want you to be doing it the correct way so Appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.